para mas masaya tayo lalo siguro. And thank you, Let, for that exhortation. Hindi lang na gets, medyo slow to mga sabadista, okay? May balak magdala ng ginto sa langit, okay? So, but anyway, uh, for those of you joining us uh, live online, we, we do have our live stream and Facebook uh, live din po. And thank you for joining us this afternoon as well. Alam ko maraming malungkot because of the recent news. And isa nga po ako sa kanina, hindi talaga ako makafocus. Um, Tagilid tayo eh. Pwede naman pagpalitin yung logo na lang eh, no? So, tingin ko talagang ano eh. Kaya puno ang church ngayon eh. Maraming magdadasal, okay na. Makalaro si Durant sa Game 5, okay? So, sa mga hindi nanonood na NBA, hindi makarelate. Ano yan, okay? So, pakitanong na lang po sa apo nyo. Okay, okay, ano yan. But seriously, <laughs> I was joking, but really, I'm serious na minsan pag may kailangan tayo, madalas tayo sa church. Sama ba? Anybody here pagka... Pagka finals exam, puno ang church, right? Diba? Diba? Sino rin sa inyo rito? Pagka finals, puno ang simbahan. Pagka magkakaroon ka ng mga rivalida, yeah? pagka doktora ka, madalas ka sa church, okay? Yung mas malapit ka sa church, pagka may mga kailangan ka. Pagka naman high time, nasa golf club, nasa mga golf course ka, diba? But I'm seriously, when you think of church, what comes to mind? Because that's gonna be our series for the next six weeks. We're going to talk about church, the trademarks of a church. And when we ask people, saan ka church what comes to mind when we hear the word church, normally it's a place, isn't it? Tama? San church mo, di ba? San ka pumupunta ng church, right? In fact, if you Google the top 10 most famous churches in the world, puro mga building ang makikita mo, okay? Itong sa, saan to? Sa, I was there ya- less yesterday, sa Spain, okay? Sa Barcelona, Spain yan, yung Sagrada. O, pag tinignan mo, mga ng puro building yan. When you talk about church, what comes to mind? Saan ang church mo? Tayo, ito, pinakamaganday sa atin, di ba? Yan yung church natin, right? Ang ganda niyan, okay? Hindi nyo pa inabot siguro yung mga bago lang. Yan po itsura three, four years ago, nung may parking lot pa tayo dyan, okay? So, saan ang church mo? Sa EN. And there's nothing wrong with that. Pagka sinabing church, really it's a place. Or to some, pag sinabing uh, play, uh, uh, really church, those are the things that you do in church. Ano mga rituals or practices? Ano mga church traditions? The liturgy, the sacraments, if you're a Catholic, ano yung mga customs na naka-attach to doing church? And sometimes we have a lot of this misconception about church and that's the reason why we're gonna have this for one and a half month. So six weeks po itong series na to entitled Church Trademark. What sets this apart, the Church of Jesus Christ in church that we're part of from thousands of different organizations in the world? Ano yung kaiba natin? Kasi you will hear people, sila sabi, pare-pareho lang naman tayo ng church, right? Pare-pareho lang naman tayo ng uh, paniniwala. Maring iba religion mo, iba religion ko, pero lahat naman yan, it will all boils down to heaven. Titignan ko sila, ewan ko sa'yo. <laughs> so, so, so narinig nyo na ba yun? Yung lahat naman tayo papunta sa langit. What sets this apart from the other religions or from the other churches na alam, alam natin? Ano yung distinct dito sa church that we're part of na, na, na Jesus Christ started it, as we know? How can we know if it's a religious organization lang ba siya? Or is it a cult? Some of you have, uh, were invited for the first time. I just texted someone uh, asking me kung uh, may service kanya because they invited someone to attend the wedding. So it's your first time here. How would you know na hindi kami kulto? Tinan mo yung katabi mo. Ayan. Uh, atulog. Okay, so mukha ibang church yan. Okay? So, so <laughs> paano mo malalaman? Mamaya, yung mga first timer na hindi ka namin yaalay. <laughs> yaalay pala dito, no? So those are the things we're gonna talk about ano yung trademark of a real church. And I know the question, Jeff, puro naman what-what na naman pag-uusapan natin. Yes, I get that. Just like uh, me siguro, pare-pareho tayo, we want to know the why, right? Anybody here? You want to know the why we're gonna have this series. Ikakatapos na natin kay Isaac, but tayo dumayo, tum, dum, tumalo ng, ng, ng Acts because we're gonna talk about the book of Acts for the next six, six weeks. So, bakit kailangan pag-aralan ng church? Well, for one, Yung katabi mo na yan, tinami katabi mo, alam mo ba hanggang eternity kasama mo yan? You're gonna spend eternity with that person sa heaven ng pavement, ginto, okay? So, whether you like it or not, you're gonna spend eternity with the person you're sitting beside with 
Kaya ngayon pa lang, pag-aralan mo na kung paano siya pakisamahan. Okay? So, yan sa church niya. Alright? Alam mo po, pagka kayo tumanggap kay Jesus, ang tiyawag po doon ay eternal membership. Anak ka ni Lord. Walang makakakuha noon. Sabi sa Biblia, no one can snatch you away from God. So, this being part of a church is an eternal membership. Pangalawa, ba kailangan natin pag-usapan ng church? Because you might be missing out on God's plan and purposes in your life Simply because you're just attending a church. Sometimes we compartmentalize Christianity. Na ang church is a Saturday 4 to 5.30 thingy. Mga millennials, okay? Kami-kami na nakaka-relate. Yung mga millennials sa noo, hindi, hindi yata makarelate sa thingy thing, okay? So, you might be missing out. Ano ba talaga purpose ni Lord? And in this day and age na it's full of consumerism, you might want to know the full benefits if you're part of a local church. Because sometimes, ang idea lang natin sa church, you want to be fed. You want to, yun na yung consumer mentality. You, you've heard about that? They come to church with too much consumer mentality. What do I expect? Puro, uh, kaya, kaya ang dami reklamo. But parang init ngayon? Summer kaya? Di ba parang, tapos pag hindi naupo yung favorite chair niya, para magre-reklamo, Asher, paalisin nga to. Nagtatites ba to? <laughs> Ako kasi hindi, okay? So, so, so those are the things na, the reason why we need to study the trademarks of a church because we might be attending church and not enjoying the full benefits that you can be part of this. And oh, ito worse. Para ito worse. Eh, hopefully, hindi ikaw to. Tingin ka rito. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, sana hindi ikaw to. Kasi, eto, tinan mo to. There are people who are attending church. They thought they're part of the church only to find out hindi talaga pala sila part ng church. May mga ganyan sa Biblia. In fact, sabi ni Jesus, not everyone, everybody say everyone. Yes. Hindi raw lahat who says to me, Lord, patawa. Di ba? Not everyone, not everyone who say to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of God. Wow. Nakakatakot to, no? Yung all your life, you come to a church building and practice a lot of practices in church and then you miss out. Yung biyahe, sabi ni Jesus sa isang grupo ng tao, away from me, you evildoers. Hindi ko kayo kilala. Nagbabait-baitan ka lang. Ang ending mo lang, langit-langitan. Doon pwede yung gold dun sa lugar na yun, yung langit-langitan, okay? Have you seen those mafia movies? Yung, yung big boss na mafia, very religious, right? Di ba, normally, ang mafia, dalawa lang kailangan. Magaling na lawyer, saka front na religious siya. Normally, ganun lang mga movie na, napanood mo Godfather. Ganun lang style ng mga mafia. May mga personal priests sila. That's why, we're, this is very important series. We are gonna look at where the first church was established in the book of Acts. So, alim na linggo, book of Acts po tayo. But first, let's look at the very foundation of this church. When was it first mentioned in the Bible? Napakahalaga po niyan because uh, alam niyo yung principle of first mention. Pag first time na mention ang word, it's very important because that sets the face, the pace rather, kung anong, anong purpose nun, but, you, but siya sinabi. So ito po, the first time it was mentioned, and who said it? The first word na church or ecclesia. And, and whose idea was that? Yung mag, mag-establish ng church. So, I'm gonna draw your attention. Dito muna tayo before we jump into the book of Acts. It happened when it was first mentioned in the Bible in the Caesarea Philippi. Okay? Anybody, you've been here? Um, ito pong Caesarea Philippi. Of course, this is in Israel. Ang tawag sa kanya ay eh, uh, Banayas or Paneas po sa mga Greek. And it was an impressive Greco-Roman city. Hindi natin ma-appreciate ngayon kasi ito yung modern day. Nung panahon ni Jesus, more or less ganyan na itsura niyan. Alright? Kung ikaw ay religious freak, okay? Masyado kang religyosong Greco-Roman citizen, this is haven for you. Because this includes mga temple and rituals and courtyards. Uh, nandiyan po yung, uh, it was built near the sacred a uh, grotto of the Greco-Roman god, Greco-Roman god named Pan. Kilala niyo si God Pan, yung half goat, half uh, man, yun na sa movie na Hercules, alright? Nag-gets niyo na? Alright, so, yan po, nandiyan si Jesus when he first uttered the word, 
church. So I mean, I'm just giving you a background para ma-appreciate lalo natin. So I, I was given a chance to go there years ago and wala na po yan, puro mga ruins na lang yan. And, but it's great. And this is where Jesus asked this famous question, the survey question. Uh, his disciples were gathered, nandun ang mga taga SWS survey, kantar and all. So nandun, and then Jesus asked the question, who do people say I am? What's the word on the street? Ano sinasabi nila ako sino ako? And you know, the disciples answered, some said, ikaw si Elijah, ikaw isa sa mga prophet, John the Baptist and all. But then sabi ni Jesus, how about you? Who do people, who do you say I am? And then Peter, I mean, ibang klase ito si Peter, we all know him. Sabi, you are the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God. So, he said it rightly, correct, because it's a divine revelation, sabi ni Jesus, hindi galing sa iyan. Galing yan sa tatay ko in heaven. Left to yourself, di mo may isip yan. So it was a divine revelation. Yung kasama nila for, for quite some time now, ito pala yung Messiah that we've been reading sa mga textbook natin. Ito yung Messiah na sa Genesis pa lang sinabi, will crush the head nung, nung serpent. Ito pala yung Messiah na nasa mga, mga tula natin at minememorize natin na one day will come. Oh my gosh, kasama natin kumakain. You're the Messiah. So this is big deal sa history. I get in the point now? And then Jesus said that word church. Sabi dito, I tell you, you are Peter. Right? And on this rock, on that very statement that you just mentioned, I, sabi ni Jesus, I will build, that's very personal, my church. There you go. That's the first mention of the word ecclesia. And you can see here that Jesus is the foundation of the church. Hindi po, may mga teaching na Peter was the first pope. Hindi po si Peter ang first pope. Hindi po si Peter ang foundation ng church. Kasi few verses after nun, ang tawag sa kanya ni Jesus, Satan. Okay, so hindi si, hindi si Peter yung, yung, may mga teaching po na si Peter ang first pope and then sinundan and he became, that si Peter is the foundation of the church. He's not, okay? Si Jesus po ang foundation ng church. He is the foundation. That's the most important thing that we need to understand. If you want to join a church, ang una mong alamin, si Jesus ba foundation na to? Because take away the truth that Jesus is the foundation. He is the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Alisin mo lang yung truth na yon, and then everything falls. Kung si Jesus ay tao lang, which may mga religion po naniniwala, si Jesus ay tao, pero patay na siya. He is a great teacher, a good moral teacher, pero his body is lying somewhere in Israel. He's a good teacher, but he's a dead prophet. Well, that church will not stand. Because, sabi ni Jesus, on your statement that I am the Messiah, I am the Son of the living God, that's going to be the foundation of my church. If Christ is not the Son of the living God, Christianity is a hoax, it's a joke. Lahat tayo rito, dyun-dyun na lang ang pagkwentoan natin. And the church is just a mere delusion. If Jesus is not the foundation ng inaattendan mong church, if the foundation is the person na nagpe-preach, oh my gosh, matakot ka na. Because it will crumble, it will... Hindi lang naman ngayon yan. Marami na pong kulto dumaan nung panahon pa ni Jesus. Bago pa, I mean, hindi lang ngayon na parang ang daming kulto na kalat sa Pilipinas alone. That is what it meant when he say ecclesia. Jesus said, it's gonna be my idea. It's gonna be a foundation that I will build and the gates of hell, yung hell pala may gate, ano? sino gusto pumasok doon? <laughs> and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. That's a function of this church. It's gonna advance. It's gonna take grounds. It's gonna conquer grounds here on earth. Yung pong gates has always been a picture of authority kasi nagkoconduct sila ng mga transaction sa gate. And sinasabi po ni Jesus dito, even the power and dominion of hell, walang, mag, walang, mag, walang kayang gawin sa church that I'm gonna establish. Sino sa inyo dito feeling mo sa office mo o sa bahay mo, nangingibabaw ang kasamaan? You've just experienced uh, uh, talagang, I mean, the devil parang nagdo-dominate sa bahay nyo. Nakatira ka sa biyanan mo, eh, talaga oh. Hindi yon hindi. <laughs> Mabait ang mga biyanan, okay? Wala naman si Mami rito, Grace, okay? Okay, sa Sunday yun eh, okay? Mahal ko yun, okay? Sino yung parang feeling mo sa office mo nagdo-dominate ang mga masasamang tao? I mean, if you're the church, if you're in that office, you should have this posture. Vandali, ba't tayo mga defensive? The church has always been on the offense. 
Hindi tayo yung parang takot. The church will always gain grounds. In fact, 2,000 years ago when it started with mere 120 disciples, look at us now as Christians. It's gaining grounds. It's advancing. So, yeah, it's a place physically. Is it really a place physically? Ano kung magsara tayo rito, itong church? Kunyari, sinara to at diniklare ng DNR because nasa Marikina fault line tayo. Paano kung isara to? Will our church still continue? Are we dependent on a building? Paano kung wala tayong building? May church pa rin ba tayo? Is it dependent on practices? We can easily get too concerned with the kind of place. Malamig ba dyan sa church nyo? May parking. Ay, walang parking. Hirap. Ayoko na mag-church dyan. May kaibigan nga kami na wala ng parking two weeks ago. Umuwi na lang eh. Wow. Sabi ko, antindi mo, parking ang ano mo ah. Kung kailangan mo magpark sa Cubao, makapagsimba lang dito, di ba? Gawin mo. <laughs> Pastor, na, ano ako, nalita akong konti, sa Cubao ako nagpark eh. Nakikita nyo, sometimes when we see a, a church as a place, a convenient place, paano ko mamatay minsan air ko natin? Ay, ang, ang bakit ang church na to, ang init? Wow! Or practices, we can easily get too caught up with all the rituals and custom and still miss out on the very reason why we are in church. Guys, look up here, this is very important. Joseph and Mary, the parent of Jesus, they're too busy doing church thing in the temple and they still miss out on Jesus. It's possible that we're so concerned of the place and the practices and miss out on Jesus. It's highly probable that we come to church, attend church every Saturday, and do all the tithes and offering and the praise and worship and still miss out on Jesus Christ. It's possible. That's why we have to really understand ano po ba tong church. So, Jesus now declared, I'm going to build my church. And the gates of Hades, walang panama dito. And now, he gave a stern warning. It's interesting because when our ninyo yung mga disciple, sabi, huwag niyo muna sabihin to. Bakit? Because the timing is not yet right. It will happen, the building of his church, it will birth once he leaves earth physically. And we know this, all of these are recorded in the Netflix series na AD, okay? <laughs> Kung napanood nyo. No, all of this are recorded in the book of Acts. So ngayon, pag-uusapan natin dyan, ngayon, where the church was birthed. Are you following so far? Mahalaga ba tong series na to? Para hindi tayo magkagulatan ni Lord. Yung tipong, Lord, attendance ko perfect, oh. Kahit walang parking, nagsimba ko, Lord. Oh. Kung absent ako, may live stream ang victory, Lord. Sabi ni Lord, sino ka? Labo mo, Lord. Sino ka? Lagi ako lang tatayt sa iyo, ha? We'd cast demon in your name. Sabi ni Jesus, away from you, evildoers. Wow. I hope huwag magkagulatan tayo lahat. Na pagdating natin sa langit talagang, we're gonna be sealed with the Holy Spirit. Amen? That's why we really need to understand ano ba yung trademarks na tong church na to. Am I really part of the church? And I'm really the church that God has called me to be. Amen? So let's just pray for this series. Panginoon, kami po'y dumadalangin sa'yo. Tanggalin niyo po yung uh, mindset namin na it's a routine, routine thing lang, Lord, sa amin yung pag-attend ng church. Minsan, Lord, yung familiarity namin, lumaki kami sa church, na yung church is something that we do just because of sa religious duty. And then paglabas namin sa church, we're gonna go on our own way. Panginoon, help us to understand through this series through your word, Lord God. Ano ba yung dapat naming gawin at ma-involve, Lord God, being part of your church, your universal church. Thank you, Lord God, for your word that still speaks life and truth today. Lord, help me as, as, as a pastor, Lord God, to speak your word effectively to your people. And Lord, all of us will learn, Lord God, and hopefully we will be changed by your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to start sa Acts chapter 2. Dito po na birth yung church. And during this time, Jesus has already resurrected and returned to the Father. So following so far, nagpapasok kayo ng Bible nyo? So si Jesus nakabalik na, ang natira sa kanya out of his hundreds of uh, disciples, barely 120, sabi sa Biblia. 
And itong 120 na to, they are fearful for their lives. Kasi yung katawan ni Jesus, hindi ma-produce ng mga religious leaders. Kasi sabi nila, ninakaw, ninakaw ng mga disciple. Eh, yung mga Romano naman, eh hanapin nyo yung bangkay na yan, magkakagulo pagka nabuhay pa yung kulto na yan. Because they're saying, it's, it's, it's a cult na bagong lumalabas na naman na religion. So hindi ma-produce yung body ni Jesus. So itong 120, they're fearing for their lives. Are you following? Hindi sila yung mga maangas agad si Jesus na buhay. No, they're cowering in fear. Nagtatago sila sa iba't ibang bahay. Because any given day, pag nalamang associated sila kay Jesus, ilabas nyo yung katawan ni Jesus na ninako nyo, they're gonna be killed. They're gonna be crucified as well. Now, pero si Jesus, inasyo sa kanila nung paakit na sa langit, sabi ni Jesus, wait for the promised Holy Spirit of my Father. Huwag muna kayo lumabas dito sa Jerusalem. And then the promise is, you will be my witnesses. You will be empowered by this Holy Spirit pag dumating siya. And you will be my witnesses in Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. And then I will be with you always. So itong mga disciple, ano yung Holy Spirit? Ano ba yung, paning, ba't na, hindi natin alam kung ano gagawin nun? Lalakas ba tayo? Lalaki katawan? Magiging Thor ba ako? Or para ako si Captain America? Pwede ko na rin hawakan yung kay Thor? I don't know, hindi ko alam kung ano yung niisip nilang power. But then it happened, the day of Pentecost, let's open our Bible to verse 1 of chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they were all together in one place. Okay? So ito na, this is the moment that the church will be birthed. And remember, Jesus warned them, huwag muna kayo lumabas. So they're all hiding in this one place sa upper room. And they're all together, 120 of them. And suddenly, bigla and doubt, there came from heaven a sound like a mighty rushing wind. At na-feel yung entire house. Grabe tong Holy Spirit. Iba yung arrived ng Holy Spirit. Para siyang rushing wind. Okay? And it filled the entire house where they were sitting. So this is what we call the infilling of the Holy Spirit. We had a series about the Holy Spirit. But at this time, it suffice to know that this is the Holy Spirit now na pinangako ni Jesus. Huwag kayong lalabas muna. Wait for the promised Holy Spirit. Kasi hindi kami pwede magsabay dito. When I leave, He will come. And then it says here, And divided tongues of fire, as of fire rather, appeared on them to them and rested on each one of them. Now, who are these people? This is a very important side note lang, and I guess this is very theological na kailangan nating marinig ngayon. Sino yung recipient ng Holy Spirit na 120? In Acts chapter 1, sinabi doon kung sino-sino yung mga to. Well, for one, ando yung tatlo na pillars ng, alam mo yung inner tree ni Jesus. Nando si Peter, John, and James, and the rest of the disciples were there, and also there were women. But there's this one particular woman na pinangalanan ng Biblia. Ang galing din ng Biblia, di ba? Pinangalanan yung woman na to by the name of Mary, and we all know this Mary, he is the mother of Jesus. She was there together with 120. And she was a recipient of the Holy Spirit. Meaning to say, Mary herself, Mother Mary, is also a recipient in need of a Savior. Hindi po siya mother of God na, na, na sinless. No, if you look at Luke, um, the Magnificat, naalala nyo nung nagbuntis siya? Nung nalaman niyang pinagsa, pinag, pinag, pinagbubuntis niya ay Savior of the world, kumanta siya. Sabi niya, my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. Everybody say, my Savior. Mary herself, Mother Mary herself was a recipient of the grace of God. That's very important theological truth na dapat natin maintindihan. When I go to heaven, siya po yung una kung gusto makita si Mama Mary. Kasi gusto ko malaman kung talaga sa picture, ganun ba talaga itsura niya. Because she's in heaven right now. She fulfilled a very important role. Imagine, she's like what? 14, 15 year old? And then sinabi, mabubuntis ka. Pledge to be married. Alam mo, katapat nun. Babatuhin ka. You're gonna be stoned to death. When you're pledged to be married and you got pregnant, man, you're gonna be stoned to death. And Mother Mary took the hit. Sige, laban tayo. Kekeri ko yung bata na yan. Wow. But that's her role. 
And she was one of the recipient of the Holy Spirit. Wow, how about that? Side note lang yon. Now, tuloy natin historia. So they were filled with the Holy Spirit. It was the day of Pentecost. The Bible says people from all of the known worlds, iba't ibang lahi nandun sa day of Pentecost. They were gathered all in Jerusalem. And, 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 and tindi, I mean, you should watch the, <laughs> the series. Luma sila Peter from fearful, being hunted, now filled with the Holy Spirit, boldly went out and started preaching the mighty works of God. Sino yung sinyo naihiyang ipaalam na born again ka sa office? Itaas mo yung kamay mo. Hinaya ka. Wala? Makapalahat ang mukha nyo? Okay? Yung parang naihiya ka kasi, naku, ako, baka hindi tayo makautong. Naku, ako pa naman yung tumitingin dun sa mga porno isang araw. Sino rito yung pag nalaman born again ka, magugulat yung office mate mo? Born again ka, hindi nga, hindi halata ha. Kala ko born against, di ba? Yung, yung tawag sa akin nung araw sa hotel, when I was working sa hotel, burned again. <laughs> yung, mga, yung mga terms sa akin, burned again ka, no? born again. Si ba? Dahil hindi makita sa buhay ko eh. Wow. <laughs> Pinagkanulo ko si Jesus, okay? <laughs> Anybody here? Or you're just fearful to share the word? Yung parang, hindi ka naman masamang tao, pero you don't have the power to share the word. I have good news for you. The infilling of the Holy Spirit will give you the boldness. They went out boldly proclaiming. This is the birth of the church right there. The church was birthed through the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, walang mababirth na church. If Peter at yung, labin, yung 120, naglakas lang ng loob, halika pare, nabuhay si Jesus, kaya natin yan. Kahit patayin tayo, mabubuhay din tayo. Ano kayo, zombie? <laughs> Imagine nyo sila Peter, naglakas loob lang on their own. Halika, kaya natin to pre. Isa-isa lang ang patayin natin. Kasi may gumagawa nun yung mga zealots. They want to overthrow Rome by force. Pero si Jesus may ibang plano. Itatayo niya yung napakaliit lang. Magsisimula sa 120 na tao. But will be empowered by the Holy Spirit. Little did I know, in 311 AD, after 300 years of being persecuted, Christianity will be accepted by Rome. In 312, si Constantine, naging Christian, and then accepted Christianity. In four, I think 400 something uh, AD, Christianity was the, 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 the religion of the whole Roman Empire. Wow. 120 na tao na hinahunting and all, may mga babae pat matatanda, how come 2,000 years after that, 2019 as we speak, bakit ka nandito ngayon? Bakit hanggang ngayon, the kingdom of God is forcefully advancing? Bakit ikaw na makasalanan, nadala ka rito because of that message 2,000 years ago? Because of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say Holy Spirit. It's only through the power of the Holy Spirit. Anyone can just establish a church. Ang dali mag-establish ng church. Pupunta ka lang dyan sa gobyerno, magpa-file ka, may tatayo akong church, and kahit anong pangalan mo pa sa sarili mo. Gusto mo palagay mong Victory Liner Fellowship Incorporated. Magtayo ka ng sarili mo, ikaw ang Diyos, whatever. Kaya yan, ang daming ganyan. If you go to the provinces, nagtatayo na maliliit na kulto, but it's gonna die of natural death. Unless it is empowered by the Holy Spirit, it's gonna be cultic in nature. It's going to be human in nature. It will die. It's only the kingdom of God. It's only the church that Jesus started with a handful of 120 people, but empowered by the Holy Spirit. Wow. We are all recipient of that. And then ito na, tuloy natin yung kwento. Nagkukwento nga lang naman tayo, kasi nga, bihira kayo magbasa ng Bible lately. Alright? So ito na si Peter, <laughs> nag-preach pa, eh. Nag-preach siya powerful. Yung mga tao nakanganga. Tapos sabi, sino yung Jesus? Yung kinrucify nyo lang nung ilang linggo pa lang nakakalipas. This, nangyari ito hindi taon. Months pa lang, kaya walang maka-refute. Hindi po yung Christianity na birth after 300 years, na birth and church. No, 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 no. Few weeks after. Or months. Peter preached so powerfully, the Bible says, watch, uh, read your Bible. The people are cut to the heart. Oh my gosh. 
yung pinako natin sa krus, yung binato pa natin, yung dumaan sa atin, yung dinuran pa natin, oh, di ba yung Jesus, sabi natin, ni Cruz, pa yan, yung magnanako ang palabas, kahit yung pala yung Messiah na kinakanta ng nanay, sa, nanay natin noong araw. So they were cut to the heart and they asked Peter, what shall we do? Sabi ni Peter, repent and be baptized because he doesn't keep records of wrong. Ikaw, ikaw, naalala ko, ikaw yun ang bato pa kay Jesus, sabi mo, crucify, ikaw, papatawarin ka niya. Wow. They were cut to the heart and Peter continued telling them, save yourselves from this crooked generation. Look at the word, look up on the screen. Save from something. All the people in front of them, they are living in a crooked, corrupt generation. And Peter was just saying, there's hope for you. Because this church that Jesus is building, these are the people who are called out. Okay, look up at the screen. Called out of darkness, but called into something, into His marvelous light. Pagka po na form on church, okay, this is a church, the word that was used there is ecclesia. Okay? Doon natin ako yung mga word natin na ecclesiastical and all. It's actually a term that means the called out ones. Hindi actually siya religious term. It's actually from the people, there are sets of people na tatawagin, or some call it an assembly, that will do the decision. So the word ecclesia, it means yung mga tinawag, called out from darkness, but called into His marvelous light. Hindi po tayo tinawag sa kasalanan and just maging floating Christian na lang tayo. So look up here, this is very important. The word church in the Bible was never, ever referred to a building facility as we know of today. Hindi po siya building. Pag sinabi po sa Biblia to the church in Corinth, to the church in Ephesus, those are people. Everybody say, everybody say people. Specifically, the gathered people of God. Pag tayong tatlo, nagpunta ng mega mall, nasa church in mega mall. Nagigets nyo? So, if it's a place, it's just going, practice, just doing, you know what church is? It's being. You are the church. In fact, you are being transformed into His Son's image and likeness. Pag kayo po ay sinabi nyo, I am the church, it means you are called from darkness into His marvelous light. So, everybody say, people. Ikaw ang church. Sinabi katabi mo, you're the church. Sabi mo, you're the church. Oh, mga maliliit pa to. Ito, chapel ka lang. Okay, iba, katedral. Okay, <laughs> ito, katedral to. Okay, ito, chapel. Okay, so, mga maliliit. Pero, ch- ikaw ang church. And Christ's likeness, listen up, this is very important. Christ's likeness, we are being transformed. Naniniwala pa kayo na binabago pa kayo ni Lord? Ikaw ba, masaya ka na sa current status mo? Yung ano ka na, okay na ako Lord, kunin mo na ako. Sino gustong kunin na ni Lord ngayon? <laughs> Pero sino sa inyo nito, alam mo may ginagawa pa si Lord sa'yo? Hindi pa tapos ay si Lord. Di ba, minsan akala mo wala ka na issue? Ang bait mo na sa kaibigan mo until nagka-iPhone X siya. <laughs> Tapos meron ka pa palang bitterness sa kanya at anger. Yung ex mo, kala mo napatawad mo na, right? Di ba? Yung, siyempre, yung ex mo, uh, 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 binrate ka. Pero ang press release mo, ako nang break. Okay, so, <laughs> so parang born again ka, sabi mo, ayoko na sa'yo. Di, parang wala na, chill lang, chill. And for like two years, feeling mo, Talagang Christian na ako, napatawad ko siya. Until nagka-girlfriend, pare, ang ganda. Nakita mo sa Instagram, mas maganda sa'yo. Nabuhay yung galit, yung talagang, eh, hu, karabas, ah, di ba gusto mo? <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> Akala ko ka, pastor na ako, ang bait ko na eh. Ikat mo ako sa C5, makikita mo, di ba? <laughs> Kaya hindi ako naglalagay ng victory na sticker, nako pare, wag. Marami na akong kinat din dyan. Okay, so, I'm just, I'm just being honest. Hello? Sino ba perfect dito? Ikaw na rito. I'm a work in progress. Talangin nyo si Grace. Ako po, huwag na. Okay? Ay, hindi nyo na ako igalang. Anyway, 
That's the point. Salvation is a one-time deal. Glorification is our perfection in heaven. But during this journey, pag naborn again ka, this is sanctification. We are being transformed from, from glory to glory. Dati nang boboso ka, ngayon hindi na. Dati nang magmura ka, every sentence may mura ka, ngayon every praise. Okay? okay. <laughs> every praise. Oh, oh, good, 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 improving, ha? Di ba? Kung magmura ka dati, every end ng sentence, a praise. Susunod, every novela na, di ba? Susunod, di ka na magmumura, magmamahal ka na. Ayun! Boom, di ba? Magmamahal ka na. Nakita mo, binabago ka na ni Lord. Tinan mo yung katabi mo. Sabi mo, babaguhin ka ni Lord. Sabi mo niya sila kadilaw, magkakabuho ka rin. Okay, sana. <laughs> Barkada ko yan, okay? Babaguhin ka ni Lord. Look up here. So church or people, the called out ones. Paano ko nasa abroad ka? Katulad na si Benji. Kailan si Benji? Yung, bahis, yung drummer natin dito, pagka, eh, nagbabarko yan eh. Kailangan mo ito, Pastor John? Ano yan? Drummer natin yan. Musician yan sa barko. O, okay, paano yan? Walang church doon. Nasa gitna ka ng dagat. Day off ko ngayon. Lalangoy lang ako. Ah. O, paano yun? Eh, nasa gitna ka ng dagat kahit day off mo. Nasa cruise ship siya eh. O, di paano? Di wala siyang church for six months. O, pa- paano yun? Buti na lang ito. Marunong itong mama na he knew the church is not constricted by a physical building like EN1. The church is not just a set of program. Ay, walang mag-worship. Hindi walang church. No. Strike anywhere tong mama na to. Ang ginagawa niya, pag day off, kinukuha niya mga kopisina niya. Tayo lang dito. Mag-worship tayo. Kakanda tayo. Tapos, manunod tayo YouTube. Manunod silang YouTube ng preaching. Live stream. Pagka inabutan kay Paolo, pag inabutan kay Pastor Ichan, manunod silang ng YouTube. And then, doon sa, sa, sa YouTube natin, sa app natin, merong manual printable or downloadable, vibrable. So pwede lang i-discuss. Lahat na binigay na namin sa inyo. Hindi ko alam kung, kung bakit di ka pa rin talaga nag-small group, okay? <laughs> because church was never confined to a building. Nasa gitna ng dagat, nag-church sila. Pag day off, nasa kunasa mas sila. Nasa Russia, na, nung kausap ko ni Saro, nasa Russia, nag-small group sila. Kung isa na tong building na to, I'll tell you something. Let's say next week, isa na tong building. Sabihin ng DNR, nasa fault line kayo, six months hindi pwedeng gamitin, check namin. The church will continue. You know why? 3,000 small groups are going on every week. 1,500 leaders will lead in a small group sa Starbucks, sa Coffee Bean, sa Jollibee, sa Bahay Bahay. Church never stops. And, and if you think the church is just here, Lilipat ka lang ng ibang church building. You miss out on what church is. It's never confined to a place. Walang building noong araw kasi persecuted sila Jesus. Persecuted ang mga born again noong araw. Wala silang punta tayo ng church. No. They're in houses. Nagtatago-tago. So, those who, were, uh, who receive His word were baptized and, and they were added that day about 3,000 of them. So that's where the church is. The gates of hell cannot overcome it. Okay? Pag nakita mo dito, when Peter preached, 3,000 were added that day. Naging number na nila, 3,120 in one single preaching, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Oh, ito na, ito na po. Dito na tayo ngayon kasi part ka na ng church. What happened when you receive Christ and become part of the church. The next verse is so powerful. Picturean nyo to dahil ito kayo. Okay? After they added, and they became Saturday church goer for the rest of their lives, sitting on their favorite chairs and waiting for Jesus to come. Ayan. Yan ang mga karamihan. Naging Saturday goer, nasa favorite chair mo iha, bawal upuan yan, and they're waiting for Jesus to come. Yan ba tayo? Hindi, hindi yan. Limang church yun. Tayo, hindi. Active dito. Ang boring ng Christian life mo kung ganyan. Yung pag naborn again ka, tapos naghihintay ka, tagal dumating ni Jesus. Ha? Magsisima na naman ba tayo? Magdadamit pa. Live stream na lang tayo. Okay. Nakita mo kung gano'ng ka-boring ang buhay mo? If you're constricted to a building, if you're constricted to a set of rules, Wow. 
Kung gusto ka ni Lord dalhin sa heaven, dapat nung baptism mo, mga 10 minutes ka namin niloblob. Pare, humihinga pa ba to? Ano ba chinecto dyan? Heaven or hell? Okay, so. Okay. Now, question. Would you like to experience the fullness and blessing of life in Christ? Anybody here? Do you want to experience the fullness and blessing of life in Christ? Hindi yung pachamba-chamba type of Christian. Christian ngayon, bukas hindi. Yung, ima, yung sala sa irit, sala sa lamig. May bago sekretary, liligawan na naman. Sandali, Christian ako, ba't niligawan ko ito? May nakita lang na, na, na picture. I-Instagram, kahit medyo may kababuyan. Ba't ko ba pinongs yun? Kala ko ba Christian ako? Gusto mo maging consistent yung walk mo? Ayaw, eh wag na. Tapusin na to. Let's just pray. Parang chill ka na lang. Alam mo ba na may i-improve pa Christian walk mo? Hindi lang persona, personal, kasi for the next five weeks, makikita natin na Christianity is not about you. This is just an introduction to, Christ, to, to what church is. So listen up, after inad yung 3,000 to the church, ito na, na birth na yung church. Alright? They devoted. Everybody say devoted. They devoted themselves. The sanctification process. Yes, I got born again, pero itong, itong process of sanctification, meron kang dapat gawin. Hindi lang maupo sa church every Saturday at maghintay for Jesus to come, which is some of you. No. You need to be devoted. The word devoted means, the Greek word is proskasterio. Ang sarap pakinggan na proskasterio. Okay? Ang ibig sabihin niyan, to hold fast to something, to prevail in st- in spite of difficulty, to endure by staying in a fixed direction. Nung sinabing, na born again, sabi ni Peter, and, and, and when they come born again, and Luke wrote, and they, the word end, and they, may ginawa sila after. Hindi lang umated ng simbahan, at makikain, at umuwi, at mag live stream, pag hindi feel mag, mag church. No, no, no. They did something. They devoted themselves to four things. Look up at the screen. To the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to breaking of bread, and to prayers. They focused on these four things. I know grace is what we need for salvation. The Bible says we are saved by grace. But also the Bible says you grow in the grace. Ito si Peter din nagsulat na to. Grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Mean to say we have to work out our salvation. Another verse says. So growing means when you got born again, you're pretty much a toddler or, or an infant. May mga issue ka pa sa buhay, may mga, may mga, may mga uh, hang-ups ka, may mga issue ka sa tatay mo, may issue ka sa nanay mo, and you are born again ka. How I wish, pag naborn again ka, ma- mawawala lahat. Hindi. In fact, ma- si Satan lalong magdo-double time sa'yo. Pipiliting kang kunin pabalik. Tinan mo katabi mo, nakuha na ba yan? <laughs> hindi makukuha yan. Kasi kay Lord yan. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching. Mean to say, uh, um, the, uh, uh, originally, the apostles' teaching referred to the apostles' preaching and teaching about Jesus' words. Yung mga natutunan nila with Jesus. And then, mag-refer sila minsan sa Old Testament, which is yung um, libro na itong lima, yung Pentateuch, and his atoning death and resurrection. But then again, how do we apply this today? Ano tong devote yourself to apostles' teaching? Well, for one, we should attend regularly a church, okay? A local church where the Bible is honored as God's Word written and is faithfully preached and taught. Mahalaga po yung local church setting. As much as sinasabi ko kanina, church is not a building, but you should be part of a local church. I know people na... Masaya na ako na nasa live stream na lang. There are people like that. But you need warm bodies. You need people that you can talk to. You need to be part of a local church. Kaya, as much as parang gusto mo lang nakaupo rito, ayaw mo kausapin mo lang katabi mo, no, no, you are part of a church. Of a local church. Victory Fort Sabadista. Saturday service. So, live stream should be your last resort. Sometimes when you're abroad or when you're sick, but the goal of devoting ourselves to the apostles' teaching is not just to simply gain information, mahalaga po yun, but to know God, which is the essence of eternal life. So next, ano yung devoted to apostles' teaching? Number two, read your Bible. 
and meditate on it every day. Napakahigsi po ng attention span ng mga tao ngayon because of social media. I have a suggest I have a suggestment for you. Maganda to suggestment ko, okay? When you do your quiet time, alam ko iba's very quiet kayo mag quiet time. Quiet na quiet, okay? Yung amen nyo the following morning na, okay? When you do your quiet time, don't use gadgets. Sa simula pa lang to habang dinidevelop mo lang yung muscle of quiet time. Why? Kasi pag ginamit mo yung phone, Nagbabasa ko kunyari ng Book of Acts, okay? And Peter, ganyan nga. Tapos nag-notify yung Twitter, natalo yung Golden State. Oh, kiklik mo ngayon yung link. Tapos sa Twitter, may link sa YouTube. Tapos before you wait, nakapitong video ka na, natig isang oras, ha? Nasaan na ba si Peter? Wala na, umalis na siya. Okay, kasi puro ka YouTube, okay? Wala na. Nabad trip sa'yo. <laughs> Nagpa-quiet time ka, sobrang dahil mong pinanood. Nag-gets nyo? Back to basic muna tayo. A notebook and a pen and a Bible. Tanggalin mo lahat ng gadget. You don't care kung sino man yung tatawag na yan. Basta this time, I allotted to God. 15 minutes of your time in the morning. Ang una mong message na namin, yung message ni God. Just, just, just spend time. Ang daming ngayon. Ang daming mga, ang daming mga apps sa Bible. And I get that. Pero for now, na develop mo yung habit of doing quiet time. Just back to the basic. A ball pen, a notebook para sa mga insight and revelation ni God and your Bible. Highlighter kung gusto mo, okay? So, so start with that. And then, sabi dito, and they devoted themselves also to the fellowship. Okay? Ano yung sabihin ng fellowship? The word that was used there was koinonia. It means communion. It means fellowship. It means close relationship. Normally, pag sa church, ganito lang ang fellowship. Hoy, fellowship tayo mamaya sa lobby. Ha? Fellowship tayo, ha? Pag mamaya patapos ng service. O, fellowship tayo. Tapos nakita sa labi, o, kumusta na? Okay, o, sige. Ang, ang haba ng pila sa kids' church, kunin ko na yung anak ko. Ay, nag-fellowship na sila. Two minutes? Hindi fellowship yon. O, mag-fellowship tayo. Minsan yung fellowship means refreshment. Mag-fellowship tayo mamaya sa bahay. Meron akong cheesecake. O, yun na yun. Nag-fellowship. Uminom ng iced tea, saka cheesecake. Wow. The word fellowship means it's a Christ-centered friendship that leads to sharing one another's joy and sorrow, bearing one another's burden, okay? Generally supporting one another spiritually, emotionally, if needed be, materially, to the ups and downs of this life. In fact, the word fellowship means um, it's a active participation in the community of believers through sharing of one's life and resources, most especially your time. Don't be like those people na kumakausap lang ng tao pag may mga papakinabangan. Ang usapin ko to. Madadownline ko kaya to sa networking. Mukhang hindi naman. Huwag na lang kausapin. Sino sa inyo rito, ganun ka lang. Pag may mga papakinabangan ka, kailangan kausap mo. Pag i-recruit mo sa bago mong negosyo. Pero pag wala, parang wala makain to. Mangungutang to. Okay. You know what the word fellowship means? It means authentic relationships. You'll find this in church. There are people in this church that I can leave my daughters to. Mas kampante kami ni Grace na iwanan. Alright? Kesa sa mga sarili namin kamag-anak. <laughs> Baka pag sa kamag-anak namin, matuto, uminom, okay? kung ano matutunan. I found the love of my life. Di ba sa church mo ako niligaw mo? Akita ko to sa camp eh, nakatambay eh. Sabi ko maganda ito, mukhang mayaman na. Okay, so, okay. Masama pa yung tensyon ko nun, okay? <laughs> eh, Siyempre, jolog lang ako nun. So, okay naman, nakuha sa ganda lalaki. But anyway, <laughs> nagkakilala kami ni Grace sa church. Hmm? <laughs> Diyan mo makikita authentic relationship. Most of my best friends sa church ko nakilala. The people that I can vouch to sa church ko nakilala. Genuine relationships. Authentic relationship. It's not just a, a casual conversation over coffee and donuts. No, no, no. no. It's life. It's developing those authentic relationships. And breaking of the bread means really a time of unity and celebrating the atoning death and resurrection of Jesus Christ and His impending return. When we do communion here and also prayers guys we don't have time but would you like to experience the fullness and blessing of life in Christ meditate on these four 
When you say meditate, you're focused. It's like a camera lens that you're trying to focus. Pag marami ka masyadong agenda, marami kang ginagawa, eh, wala kang time magbasa ng Bible. Sino rito mas marami ka pang pinapanood na Korean novela? Umamin ka! Kilala kita! Ano yun sa'yo? Kabisado mo lahat ng Korean novela. Tapos ang verse mo, John 3.16, hirap ka pa. Or King James Version ka pa. Kabisado mo lahat ng Netflix na series. Tapos, pagka magpe-pray, inaanto ka. Hello! Barkada mo lahat, pero sa church wala kang barkada. Kasi baka mahalaman ito ang ugali mo. Wow! Natatawa si ate. Mukhang siya yon, Okay? <laughs> Do you want to experience the fullness and blessing of life in Christ? Church. The trademark of a church. Devoted people. The called out ones. Let's all stand our feet. That's just the introduction for the series, okay? Balik pa kayo for the next five weeks. We're gonna talk more about church. Now, appreciate you by in church ngayon. Come on. I mean, it's God's idea. Yun yung ginamit niya to start the ball rolling when he left. The people continued advancing God's kingdom empowered by the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you this afternoon. Panginoon, may you correct our wrong mindset pagdating sa church. And sometimes we go to church, we attend the church, we do church, and missing out that we are the church. We represent you, Jesus Christ. In fact, we are called to be like you. Christ-likeness. Kaya Panginoon, we just ask and pray. Marami i-offer ang mundo na to. Negosyo, pera, success, even good things na akala namin okay lang maging busy with pero the moment na dalayo ang devotion namin sa'yo we know that it's not from you even Satan offered that to Jesus Christ I can give you all the glorious things in this world I can give you all the kingdoms of this world Kaya Lord help us to focus and devote ourselves to your word to be in part of a victory group to the communion and breaking of the bread and most importantly to prayer Lord we just pray that those people na wala pang victory group or small group they will have a great need that only in church they can really find those people that they can really confine with and help walk with someone Lord God in pursuing you so Lord help us this afternoon i-recalibrate mo Lord yung wrong mindset namin because we're thinking sometimes that like, church is just a Sunday or Saturday thing. And for the rest of the week, kami na nasusunod. Lord, you are the one who built the church and building it, advancing it. Help us, Lord God. Use us, Lord God. Help us to be the church that you have called us to be in our homes, in our offices, in our schools. Everywhere, Lord God, you take us. Help us. To be the church in Jesus name amen 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 come on let's give him praise all right